The next chapter that we are going to study is on triangles and we will begin the discussion of this chapter by first defining uh, what a triangle is. A triangle is a closed figure which contains uh, three vertices, three sides and three angles. So you have shown here three different triangles and let us try to identify what are the three vertices for each of those triangles, what are the three sides and what are the three angles contained in those uh, triangles. So for triangle number one, we have three vertices A, B and C. So let's write down the vertices for triangle number one are A, B and C. Uh, similarly, the vertices for triangle number two are D, E and F. Vertices means the corners of the triangle. So the, for the triangle number two, the vertices are D, E and F. So let's write that down here. D, E, F are the vertices for triangle number two. And for triangle number three, the vertices are X, Y and Z. So let's write that down here also. X, Y and and Z. So we have defined uh, what are the vertices of the triangles. Then we have said that the triangle is a figure which has three sides. What are the three sides for the first triangle? The sides are the uh, lines which close, in, close in to form the triangle. So we have the line AB, BC and AC. So we have three sides of the triangle. We will name them for triangle number one as AB bc and ac or we can also write it as uh, bac b and ca you can change the order of the lines of the points on the lines it doesn't make any difference similarly for the triangle number two the sides are de ef and df so we write that down de ef and df and for triangle number three, similarly, the sides would be XY, YZ, and XZ. So we have three different sides for the triangles. And finally, we have said that the triangle also has three angles. What are the three angles in the triangle? So for triangle number one, the first angle is this angle A, which we can write as angle B, A, C. The second angle is this angle here, which we can simply write as angle B. And the third angle here is angle C. So we have three different angles. So for the first triangle, it is angle A, angle B, and angle C. For the second triangle, we have an angle here, so that would be angle D. And if you notice this triangle, the lines uh, D, E and E, F are perpendicular to each other. So the angle there is 90 degrees, but we will simply call that as an angle E. And the third angle is angle F. So we have three angles, angle D, angle E and angle F. In this case, angle D angle E and angle F and for the third triangle over here we have angle X angle Y and angle Z so we we'll mark them we have angle X angle Y and angle Z so similarly here I'm going to mark it with the different notation okay so for triangle number three, we have angle X, angle Y, and angle Z, okay? So triangle basically is a closed figure which has uh, three vertices, three sides, and three angles. By changing the sides, uh, the length of the sides or the angles, and having different combinations for the sides and angles, we can make triangles of different dimensions. Okay, let us now uh, discuss what do we mean by congruence and how to determine if uh, two triangles are congruent to each other. Congruence means that a figure is equal in all respects. 
in all respects we mean that the figure has the same dimensions and the same shape for all its uh, combinations so figures of shapes and sizes are same are called as congruent figures so if we look at these figures here uh, we have square a and square b these two squares are congruent to each other which means that if we place one figure on top of the other they will completely cover each other so in that case we say that the figures are congruent so we can either place figure b the, or the square b on square a or square a over square b in either case the figure on top will cover the figure at the bottom so let's see if that is happening for these figures so if we put the figure the square b on top of square a we see that it is completely covering the square a similarly if we take the square a and put it on top of square b we see that it is completely covering the square b so that means square a and square b in this case are congruent to each other similarly if we look at these two circles a and b they are also congruent to each other we can show by putting uh, circle b on top of circle a and we see that circle b completely covers circle a and therefore circle a and b are congruent to each other similarly we can also put circle a on top of circle b and see that it completely covers circle b so we have again circles a and b congruent to each other now in this chapter we are going to focus on the congruence of triangles only so this chapter is about triangles so we are going to see what are the rules that must be satisfied in order for two triangles to be congruent so i have shown some examples here for triangles which are congruent and triangles which are not congruent so triangle a and triangle b are congruent with respect to each other so if we take triangle b and put it on top of triangle a it completely covers it up so a and b are congruent to each other so we can also put triangle a on top of triangle b it completely covers triangle b so therefore triangle a and b are congruent to each other similarly triangle c and d are also congruent with respect to each other so if we put take uh, if we put this triangle c on top of triangle d it covers it completely therefore c and d are congruent to each other or we can put triangle d and put it on top of triangle c again it covers c completely so therefore we can say triangle c and triangle d are congruent to each other but if we check the congruence between triangle a and triangle c they are not congruent to each other because if we take triangle c and put it on top of triangle a we see that they are not covering each other so therefore triangle a and triangle c are not congruent to each other similarly if you put triangle a on top of triangle c again we see that they are not, a is not covering c completely so therefore a and c and similarly triangle b and d are also not congruent to each other whereas a and b are congruent to each other and c and d are all, are congruent to each other so now let us focus on how can we uh, prove that two triangles are congruent let us take the first condition that one of the sides of our two triangles are equal in that case whether the two triangles are congruent or not so the first uh, condition that we are taking is one only one side of the two triangles is same so we have two triangles here there is one side of 3 cm and there is one side of 3 cm in fact the second triangle has all three sides of 3 cm but only one 3 cm is matching with the 3 cm in the other triangle so therefore uh, we want to check if this is congruent or not clearly from the figure we know that they are not congruent because if we take triangle one and put it on top of the other triangle they are not covering each other so therefore they are not congruent triangles that means if the, there is only one side which is matching for the two triangles we cannot say that the two triangles are congruent so if only one side of the two triangles is same are the triangles congruent the answer is no they are not congruent no they are not congruent okay so one side if only one side of the two triangles is matching then we cannot say that they are congruent 
Next we will take one side and one angle to be the same and then we will see uh, check whether they are congruent or not. So in this case we are considering two triangles where one of the pair of sides are equal and also one of the pair of angles of the two triangles are equal. So we have a side here of 3 centimeters, which is the base side. The base side of the other triangle is also 3 centimeters. So they have two, uh, one pair of sides which are equal and then there is also an angle uh, contained on this equal side of 60 degrees. Similarly, the other angle, the corresponding angle on the other triangle is also 60 degrees. So in this case, are the two triangles are, are uh, always going to be congruent to each other. Clearly, as we see in this figure also, that these two triangles are not congruent because if we take one of these triangles and put it on the other, they are not covering each other. So we can say that these two triangles are not congruent with each other. So that means this condition that one pair of sides are equal and one pair of angles are equal. So you see here side one of the first triangle and side one of the second triangle. That's one pair of sides and one pair of angles are equal. If this, if this is the given condition, under this condition, are the two triangles congruent or not? Again, the answer is no. The triangles are not congruent if only one side and one angle is matching. We need more information to prove that they are congruent. So, with only one pair of sides and one pair of angles matching, the two triangles are not congruent. So, again we write no. The triangles are not congruent. Now let us extend this uh, condition even further. So rather than having just one pair of sides and one pair of angles to be the same, if we have two pairs of sides to be the same and one pair of angles to be the same for the two triangles, in that case are the triangles congruent or, or not congruent? Let us see what happens. So we extend it to two pairs of sides being same and the pair of angle uh, included within those two sides is the same. In that case, are the two triangles congruent or not? So we see here, one side is matching. So we have three centimeters for the first triangle for one of the sides, and we have three centimeters for the second triangle for the other side. Similarly, we have four centimeters for the second side of both the triangles, and the angle between those equal sides is 60 degrees so the angle is included between the equal sides it's not the other angle so the angle the equal angle that is present here is between the two sides which are equal so we have three centimeter and four centimeter side which are equal in both the triangles and the 60 degrees angle which is equal lies between the equal sides so in this case are the triangles congruent or not and the condition is that if this condition is satisfied then the two triangles are indeed congruent. Yes, the triangles are congruent. Okay, so for the triangles to be congruent, we need three parameters of the triangle to match. So it can, it is in this case side an angle side so there is a side which is matching in both the triangles there is an angle which is between the two sides and another side which is matching for both the triangles so this criteria which proves congruency for two triangles is called as the side angle side criteria side angle side or in short form we write this as S A S criteria. Side angle side means there are two sides which are equal and the angle between the equal sides. The angle must be between the two equal sides. So that angle is equal. So if you notice here, the angle is between the two equal sides, between 3 cm and 4 cm. It is not the other angle here or the other angle here. Similarly, it's not the other angle here or here. Okay, so in this case, we call this criterion for congruence as side angle side criterion or SAS criterion. We will discuss about this SAS criterion in more detail with an example. So let us now uh, do an example which applies the side angle side or SAS criteria 
to prove two triangles are congruent and that will give us a better understanding uh, of this uh, idea. So we have the uh, SAS congruence rule which says that two triangles are congruent if two sides and the included angle. That means the angle between the two sides of one triangle are equal to the two sides and the included angle of the other triangle. So let us do an example here. So we are having two triangles here. Uh, one triangle is the flipped version of the other triangle. It's like upside down. We have two triangles, one placed on the other upside down. And we are given certain conditions. And based on those given conditions, we are asked to prove that uh, the two triangles, uh, OCB and OAD, are uh, congruent or not congruent. And by the way, one of the things which I forgot to tell is, uh, when two triangles are congruent, the way it is written is for congruence, uh, if we call this as triangle number uh, A, and if I call this as triangle number B, and when you say that these two triangles are congruent, so you'll write this as triangle A is congruent to triangle B. So this symbol that we have put here with a tilde, tilde will uh, above and equal to sign, that is the sign for congruence. So triangle A is congruent to triangle B. That's the notation when we write congruence. Similarly here, we are given certain conditions and asked to prove whether these two triangles are congruent or not. So what is given to us is that uh, this line OA is equal to OB. So I have marked it with a single dash on those lines. That means the lines which have a single dash, they are of equal length. Similarly, it is given to us that OC and OD are equal. OC and OD are equal. I have marked those two equal parts with, the, with two dashes, with double dash. So the double dash indicates that those lines are of equal length. And we are asked to prove that triangle AOD and triangle BOC are congruent triangles. Now, clearly we have two sides which are equal. We need to prove that one of the angles between those two sides are equal. So that is the first side which is equal for both the triangles. That is the second side which is equal for both the triangles. And the angle that lies between the two sides is this angle here. This is the angle which lies between those two sides. And we need to show that these two angles are equal. How can we show that? We know from our previous chapter about intersecting lines that when two lines are intersecting, so that's line, that's one line, AB, and another line, CD, they're intersecting each other. It has vertically opposite angles. So that means when two lines are intersecting each other, the vertically opposite angles are equal. So that means angle COB and angle AOD are equal. So that's the first thing we are going to show. Since AB, and CD intersect each other since AB and CD intersect each other angle AOD is equal to angle uh, COB Right? Or we can also write it as B or C, it doesn't matter. So these angles are equal. Why? Because they are vertically opposite angles. Okay? So now, once we have proved this one condition, we already have two sides which are equal. And now we have an angle which is equal. And that angle is lying between the two sides which are equal. So it is the included angle between the two sides. And that is what this SAS congruence rule says. It says that the two triangles are congruent if two sides and the included angle of one triangle is equal to the two sides and the included angle of the other side. So we have one side, one side equal. Second side, second side equal. And the included angle between the two sides for both the triangles also equal. So therefore, the two triangles are congruent. So therefore, by SAS rule, by side angle side rule, triangle A, 
O D is congruent to triangle B O C. Okay, so that is proved. The next thing we are asked to prove is that the lines A D and B C are parallel to each other. So how can we prove that? To prove that the two lines are parallel, one of the ways we can do is we have to prove that the alternate angles are equal. So if we if we can show that angle B is equal to angle A or angle C is equal to angle D, then we can prove that these two triangles, uh, these uh, these two lines AD and BC are parallel to each other. Now already we have proved that triangle BOC is congruent to triangle AOD. It's already proved. Once we prove that two two triangles are congruent to each other, then the re remaining parts of those triangles are also equal. So that is called as corresponding parts of the congruent triangle CPCT rule. So we can uh, say that since triangle AOD and BOC are congruent, since triangle AOD is congruent to triangle BOC all the other parts of the triangles are also equal parts of the triangles are also equal this is called corresponding parts of congruent triangles in short we write this as corresponding parts of congruent triangles cpct so from our figure we can say that because the two triangles AOD and BOC are congruent, that means the corresponding angle B will be the same as angle A and the angle C, I'm marking this with three lines, will be the same as angle D because they are corresponding parts of the congruent triangles. But we see that angle B, which is equal to angle A, is nothing but the alternate angles for these uh, two parallel lines, which are cut by this transversal. So it's like uh, AB is the transversal to the lines BC and AD. And the alternate angles are shown to be equal here. If the alternate angles are equal, that means the lines are parallel. Because only when the two lines are parallel, cut by the transversal, we get alternate angles to be equal. So, AD and BC is cut by the transversal AB. AD and BC is cut by... transversal AB and from our figure we see that angle B is equal to angle A or we can write it as angle OBC is the same as OAD angle OBC BC is equal to angle OAD how do we know that? by by cp ct but angle o b c and o angle o a d are alternate angles angles since the alternate angles are equal, it means that the two lines are parallel. Since 
alternate angles are equal AD and BC are parallel AD is parallel to the line BC hence proved okay so when we solve these problems all the ideas that we have learned in the previous classes in the previous chapters will also be useful in solving the problems in this chapter and in future chapters also so you need to remember the ideas and the topics that you have learned in the previous chapters okay so we have proved that triangle uh, o a o d is congruent to triangle b o c and we have also proven that angle uh, the the line a d is parallel to the line b c because there is alternate angle b and a which is same similarly we could have proved it through this also alternate angle c uh, c and d which are alternate angles are also equal so therefore ad and bc are parallel to each other